Let's review the graphs of functions, specifically some functions from college algebra that we call the library of functions and then some others we learn in college algebra and also some trig functions. So first of all, linear functions. Those are functions that can be re represented as f of x equal mx plus b. Of course, we remember that m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And as long as our slope is not zero, then as we're looking at these, our domain, remember domain is the defined values of the function for x, and that would be all real numbers, and the range, the range are the function values or the y values on the graph that you get out, would be all real numbers as well. Other things you may ask would be the zeros of the function and the zeros are where the function equals zero. So those would be the x-intercepts. If you're looking at this particular linear function, the zero would be where x equal negative two. Looks like this one is also negative two and this one is something like about Oh, one fourth or something like that. So the zeros are the x-intercepts. They're where the function equals zero. If we ask the intervals where the function was positive, that would just simply be where the function is above the x-axis. In this particular case, this would be the interval from negative infinity to negative two. And intervals where the function was negative, that would be where it's below the x-axis where the y values or the function values are negative and that would be from negative 2 to infinity. Something else that we might ask would be the end behavior. As x approaches infinity, what does the function value or f of x do? And so here as we go out towards x going towards infinity, we see this function is getting smaller and smaller here to approaching negative infinity. So f of x would approach negative infinity. If we said, what does this function do when x approaches negative infinity? As we go out here towards negative infinity and we find the function, we see the function value is getting larger and larger and f of x would be approaching infinity. Let's go ahead and look at a constant function. This is a linear function, but it's the special case where the slope equals zero. So if the slope equals zero, then that x term is not there and we just have f of x equal three or negative one or one. So it is when f of x equals b, where b is any real number. Now, if we ask the domain, the domain is still all real numbers, but the range, well, the range for this first one is just three because the only function value we ever get out is three and the range right here is negative one. And if we ask then the zeros, these particular functions do not have any zeros because you can see in each of these three examples that we don't have any x-intercepts. So there are no zeros to these functions that are shown here. And if we want to know the end behavior, we can see on this particular one as x approaches infinity, as we go out here as x gets larger and larger and we go find the function, we always stay on three. So we'd say f of x, we can just put equals. It's not even approaching, it is always three. And as x approaches negative infinity, this function again always equals three. The identity function is a special linear function. It's where f of x equal x. So a linear function when the slope is one and the y-intercept is zero. And we call this identity function because if you put any real number in this function, you get the same real number back. It doesn't change the x value here. So we have f of x equals x. If we're looking at the domain, we can see that it's all real numbers and the range is also all real numbers. The zeros of this function, just where x equals zero. And we can see the end behaviors as x approaches infinity, we're going to infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, we're going to approach negative infinity. The square function, was just simply f of x equals x squared. We know the graph of that, that's a quadratic function, is a parabola. And we can see that the domain is all real numbers, but the range is just y greater than or equal to zero.
and we see that this function is never negative. Now if we wanted to know the zeros we see that there's just one at x equals zero and the functions where this or the intervals where this is positive I just didn't do that on the last one but if we have negative infinity to zero and then we also have from zero to infinity it's not positive when it equals zero zero is neither positive nor negative but we do have positive function values on either side of zero and behavior we can see as x approaches infinity that the function value approaches infinity as x approaches negative infinity the function value again approaches infinity let's look at the cube function all of these are graphs of things that you should just know the shapes of just out of your head the common functions the cube function f of x equals x cubed and as we see this one we can see that the domain is all real numbers the range is all real numbers there is a zero here at x equals zero this function is positive from zero to infinity and this function is negative so below the um, x-axis there from negative infinity to zero. We can see n behaviors as x approaches infinity, the function value approaches infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, the function value also approaches negative infinity. Let's look at the square root function. This is again one we should be able to just draw any of these. We see square root of x, we go, oh, okay, I know the shape of that. The domain of this function is zero and positive numbers because for a real valued function it is undefined to have the square root of a negative number. So for the domain we could write it as an interval like this or we could write x is greater than or equal to zero. We can see that the range is where y is positive or zero so y greater than or equal to zero or we could write this interval for y again with a square bracket including zero to infinity. We can see the intervals where this function is positive that would be from zero to infinity this function is never negative. The end behavior as x approaches infinity this function getting larger and larger will also pro approach infinity and we can't let x approach negative infinity because that is not in the domain of the function. The reciprocal function is f of x equal 1 over x and so if we were looking at the domain we see that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0 because this function is undefined at x equals 0. So the domain of this function is the set of all x such that x does not equal 0 or if we were writing that as an interval it would be from negative infinity to 0 and then from 0 to infinity. Now just as a comment some books will join these um, intervals with the comma and some with a union. Now the range we can see as we're looking at the uh, function values for this function that we take on all y values except zero. This function never equals zero and you can see no matter what I put in this function I will never get out zero. And so our range would be from negative infinity to zero and then from zero to infinity. If we were looking for the zeros of this function, there are no zeros because there are no x-intercepts. There is no place where this function equals zero. The interval where it's positive would be the interval from zero to infinity and where it's negative would be negative infinity to zero. Looking at the end behavior as x approaches infinity this function is approaching zero. You can see as we get larger and larger we're getting closer and closer to zero and as x approaches negative infinity this function again is approaching zero. As I approach uh, from this side you can see that I'm getting closer and closer and closer to zero. The absolute value function this is v-shaped it would always be positive if we just had the absolute value of x because it was before we added the absolute values it essentially was this identity function but then anything that ended up negative ends up being positive here so we get this v-shape. So the domain of this function 
it's all real numbers. You could put in anything here and you would never get anything that's undefined, but the range of this function is going to be from zero to infinity. This function is never negative. Now I wanted to make sure you understood when it's positive, negative, and what the n values mean, but I think you got the idea on those, so I'm not going to continue to do that. For the exponential function of e to the x that has that natural base e, we should just automatically know this graph. We know that e to the 0 is 1, so this graph is going to have a y-intercept right here. If we wanted to know the domain, that's going to be all real numbers. The range is going to be positive numbers. And there are no zeros because this function is actually getting closer and closer to zero here, but it never does intersect the x-axis. Uh, intervals where it's positive, this function is always positive. And let's go ahead and do the end behavior on this one because this one's kind of interesting. So as x approaches infinity, we can see that this function is also approaching infinity. It's getting larger and larger and larger here. But as x approaches negative infinity, as we move out this way, we see that the function value is approaching zero. Now this should have been an approaching. There we go. The natural log function, again, this is a shape that you should just know when you see L and X, you say, oh, I know what that graph looks like. It is a graph that has an X intercept at one. The natural log of one is zero. The domain, as we're doing natural log, we know that we can't, it is undefined for the log of zero or the log of a negative. And so the domain of this function would be uh, positive numbers. You can see that on the graph as well. The range though, we see that it takes on all function values, all y values, so the range would be all real numbers. The zero of this function would be where x equals one. That's where it crosses the axis. The intervals where it is positive then would be from one to infinity, and where it is negative would be from zero to one. Looking at n behavior, you can see as x approaches infinity, this is gradually getting larger and larger and larger. So the function value, the f of x, would also approach infinity. And we can't approach negative infinity because it's undefined there. We can see that as we approach 0, it is going to negative infinity. Now let's remember a couple of trig functions. We should know sine and cosine, be able to just sketch them quickly out of our head. And we know that the sine of zero is zero. So the sine is the trig function that is zero at zero. So we'll put that uh, point at the origin. And we know that the period of the basic sine and cosine is two pi. So this would do one complete cycle and 2 pi, and we know it does its first half of a cycle from 0 to pi. So now as we're answering the questions for the domain, the domain for the sine is all real numbers, but we know the range, the sine oscillates between 1 and negative 1, so the range is from negative 1 to 1. Now looking for any zeros, there's actually going to be an infinite number of zeros because there's an infinite number of x-intercepts here, and they are multiples of pi. So we could write that to be x equals k pi, where k is any integer. That way if k is 0, you've got this 0 right here. If k is 1, you've got the 1 right here. If k is 2, you've got this one. If k is negative 1, you've got this one, and so forth. Now the intervals where this is positive, this is going to be positive from 0 to pi. Then it's going to be positive again from 2 pi to 3 pi. And that would be this piece right here and it would continue like that. So I'm okay with you listing a couple of them and then putting dot 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 so we can see the pattern. The intervals where it's negative, it's going to be negative from pi to 2 pi and then again from 3 pi to 4 pi and so forth. Now answering the questions of the end behavior, this function as x approaches infinity is just going to continue to oscillate between 1 and negative 1. So it does not approach a specific value. So we could write it's going to oscillate from negative 1 to 1.
and that's going to be true if you approach infinity or negative infinity. Now the cosine function is like the sine function except that at 0 it is 1. It is phase shifted if you remember by pi over 2. So domain, all real numbers, range from negative 1 to 1, inclusive. Intervals where this function is positive, we can see that this function is positive here and we know that that is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and then again from 3 pi over 2 to 5 pi over 2 and so forth. And then the function would be negative in between there so that would be from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 and so forth. Now the end behavior again is as x approaches infinity or negative infinity it's going to continue to oscillate between 1 and negative 1. So this wraps up sort of the functions that we should be able to sketch out of our heads that will be useful to us as we move along in calculus, these basic functions.